takes a lot of years before you begin to realize uh, the changes that are occurring in front of you. For a person such as myself to, to realize uh, what we did have and what we are losing. I've seen it here. I've lived with the different floods, for example. I've seen them. I've seen drought, like as we do right now. So it takes a long time for somebody to start realizing how the water works in uh, such an uh, important uh, place like uh, the Cumberland Delta here on the Saskatchewan River. I started trapping about 12 years old when I was introduced to a dozen traps, like a dozen muskrat traps, and then hooked from there, never left the delta after that. So a river's purpose is to carry nutrients and, and, and rich particles to the delta to replenish, and that's God's way of fertilizing the delta. We need the rivers to carry sediment, and ever since we put the dams they built reservoirs, so they slow down the current on the reservoir, so all that sediment starts dropping into the reservoir. And when they release the water, there's no sediment. It's just pure water. The further it comes down, the, the less momentum it has, so it doesn't cut the banks anymore. So it started to, the past 25 years or so, it started cutting at the bottom of the river. So that, by doing that, it's deepening the, the river, like going down further, and then leaving all the smaller tributaries high and dry because they don't have the same momentum as these big rivers have. You pay big money for a moose fall, eh? <laughs> and you can use your, your oil filter to make a moose fall. Oh. 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 Where's my lighter now? Where did I put mine? Phragmites are taking over the whole delta, choking up all the smaller plants and the, the food source is dwindling away. This is the largest reproducting area for waterfowl, like at one point in time, but the whole system is changing. What happens when we have floods, it, these logs seem to find these small rivers and uh, start uh, building up, uh, clogging these, uh, these tributaries that lead into these wetlands. And then once the logs get in here, sediment hits the log, the sediment starts dropping and it starts building up, building up, building up, and the next thing you know you have a levee totally clogging the river. So that, this wetland, leads a long, long ways and uh, now the only time it sees water is uh, when we have a major flood. SAS Power is paying us to clear the log jams so the river system will open back up again because the logs all pile up into one spot. Everything that's on the shorelines like this will have to get cleared out and put in piles. We concentrate on the main travelways and main river systems that affect the fish. See lots of chains, lots of river system plugging up. Willows, these were never here, these willows. All this stuff was wide open. This was a lake. Log jam plugging up everything. We can't do our, what we used to do. Okay, right now we'd be out moose hunting right now, but now we're going to clear log jams. <laughs> This is uh, where I was raised along with my uh, siblings and um, my dad's livelihood uh, depended on this place here. The amount of water that it used to need to thrive, we don't have that no more. It, it's taken uh, our livelihoods away. We used to be fishermen here. We can't do that no more. I think we do not appreciate our backyards. We have so much of it, we don't investigate. We don't walk our river valleys. If there's a paved path, maybe, but we really don't know about the, the history, the culture, the language, 
the water. I think we need to work with the people that live in this area that know some of the issues that uh, we've been dealing with for years to develop a downstream plan that would be beneficial to the marshes and the delta. It's important to utilize that water that we have so we can share it with the people of Saskatchewan.